Good morning, boys and girls. I want you to know we miss you. We're working hard to try to get something going for all of us so that we can start meeting again. Uh, Pastor Phil will be delivering that probably through an announcement coming soon, we hope, maybe mid-August or late August. But today, I want you to see my shirt. It says, Here to Serve. And you're like, well, what is Miss Lynn doing with the shirt on that says, Here to Serve? To serve means to perform duties or service for another person or an organization. Well, in this case, this shirt represents our church, an organization. And today, I serve the Lord by helping greet people at the door, by making sure everyone had a seat, making sure that each family was kind of seated together so that we would be socially distancing six feet apart. Um, I serve the Lord today by sanitizing the doors and the giving tables and cleaning the restroom counters off and spraying Lysol. So how did I serve today? I just took care of things that needed to be took care of. And you'll see throughout the weeks, there'll be different people that'll be wearing these shirts that have different duties in the church. Today, I serve the Lord in a small way. How did I get the opportunity to serve? Well, Pastor Phil sent out a call requesting people volunteering to help. Well, I just felt the desire that I could help. When he got ready to reopen the church, he knew that it was going to be different and he needed people to do certain things. So we had a meeting and I attended and during the meeting, I volunteered to help clean up after everybody. Whatever we can do, everything you can do for the Lord, that is just such a small way to serve him. We all have a chance to uh, serve the Lord. Can you serve the Lord as young as you are? Yes, you can serve the Lord. And it can be as simple as picking up paper out of the floor when church is over or straightening your chairs back up, throwing away your gum paper, your candy wrappers. Serving God does not mean that it has to be hard. It just means that you do it with a loving heart because you want to serve Him. If you don't pick up your paper once you leave the uh, sanctuary, somebody else is going to go behind you and have to do that job. So there's all kind of ways that we can serve the Lord. And it's so strange that it kept coming to me, here to serve, here to serve, here to serve. So I opened my book that I've taught out of for years and here was a piece of paper. I opened it and guess what it was? God's servant, Samuel. I said, well, Lord, you must want me to do a lesson today on serving the Lord. So the last judge in Israel's history was named Samuel. While Samuel was judged, the people of Israel insisted on having a king like the countries around them. Samuel tried to tell them that God did not, that it wasn't a good idea, but they wanted to have it anyway. From boyhood, Samuel tried to serve God. He made mistakes, but in his heart, Samuel always longed to obey God. Samuel's life intertwined with Saul's life, the first king of Israel, and David, a future king, and a man whom God called a man after his own heart. The stories taken in 1 Samuel 1, 30, uh, 3, 1 through, uh, 1 Samuel uh, 1, yeah, chapter 3, verses 1 through 21. And this is a young Samuel, so I want you to hear the story about you're never too young to serve God. Never. And as you grow in your walk with God, you have that desire in your heart to want to serve Him more. Elkanah made a special trip to Shiloh each year to worship God. He had two wives, Panina and Hannah. He loved Hannah the most, but she did not have any children. Panina had children, and she made fun of Hannah for being childless. We've all been made fun of. Something in our life people have made fun of us for. One year, 
Elkanah brought the two wives to Shiloh to worship God. Hannah's heart was breaking because she really wanted to have a child. One night, she went by herself to the tabernacle to ask God to give her a child. Hannah fell to her knees and cried very hard. In her heart, she was praying. In fact, her mouth moved with prayer, but she said no words. She was uttering. God, please, in your mercy, give me a son. I promise you that I will give him back to you to be your servant. An old priest, Eli, watched the woman crying, apparently talking to herself. He didn't know she was praying. He thought she was drunk. Woman, he said, why do you come in here after you've been drinking? She said, no, sir, no, sir. I'm not drunk, Hannah cried. I was asking God to give me a son. I promised to give my son back to him to be his servant. Oh, sir, my heart aches to be a mother. Well, Eli said, may God grant your request. Less than a year later, Hannah did have a baby, a baby boy, and she named him Samuel. When the little boy was old enough to live away from his family, she took Samuel back to the tabernacle to live. Eli, the priest, taught Samuel how to serve God. One night, young Samuel went to bed in the tabernacle. He was tired from a long day at work. Just as he was about to fall asleep, he heard, Samuel, Samuel. He quickly got up out of bed and ran to where Eli was sleeping. Here I am. What do you need? Samuel was wanting to serve Eli to help Eli. Eli answered, I didn't call you Samuel. And he told the, babe, the boy to go back to bed. Samuel crawled back into bed, but soon heard his name called again. Once again, he ran to Eli. But once again, Eli told the young boy that he had not called him, and he went back to bed. For a third time, Samuel went to bed. Again, he heard, Samuel, Samuel. So once again, he ran to Eli and asked, what the old priest wanted. By now, though, Eli knew that it was God calling for Samuel. So Samuel was hearing God's voice. When your name is called again, answer with, Here I am, Lord. I am listening. Samuel did what Eli suggested, and God told him what some of his future plans were. As Samuel grew, God was always with him, to be wise and helpful for many people. Now, in the Bible, it talks about Samuel's job. He always opened the door. And um, that was one of the jobs that he had. Every morning, uh, Samuel loved the Lord and served in the temple. One job was opening the temple doors. That may seem simple opening the doors but think someone daily had to open that door we can all serve the lord we need to pray and ask god how we can serve him we uh, he will give you ways to serve him there was a story that i heard years and years ago and i'm going to share that story with you there was a elderly man that had gone to this church for many many years and every Sunday morning, he didn't preach, he didn't teach, he didn't lead uh, singing, he didn't pray out loud, he didn't do anything that would draw attention to himself. But what he did do was every Sunday morning, he got to church real early. And in the winter, he turned on the heat, and in the summer, he turned on the air. So he made the church always comfortable for everybody coming in. When the congregation arrived, if it was wintertime, they were warm. If it was summertime, the church was cool. Nobody thought anything about that little man and that small job that he did until one morning uh, they arrived at church in the middle of the winter and the church was so cold that they couldn't stand it. Everyone looked around asking, why is the church so cold? Why is the heat not on? It had never occurred to them 
that every Sunday that somebody had turned the heat on or turned the air on. The little elderly man had passed away and for years he had served the Lord by simply turning on the heat or the air. But it was a job that somebody had to do and he served the Lord by doing that simple job but he did it faithfully every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday, every time the ladies met, every time the men met, every time the kids met. He made sure that, that uh, the temperature was turned on hot or cold, whichever they needed it to do. Just like Samuel, Samuel opened the temple doors. Somebody had to open the doors. This little man controlled the thermostat that heated or cooled the church. We can serve God. Pray and ask God to show you ways that you can serve the Lord. It does not have to be a hard job, but it needs to be a job called by God for your life. The elderly man, it wasn't a hard job, but it needed to be done. And it needed to be every time the doors were open. So he was faithful. He was missed when he wasn't there. Everybody realized, hey, somebody's been turning on the heat or the air all these times and we didn't think nothing about it. We just thought it got done. He was there every time to serve God. Find a way to serve God and serve Him with a loving heart. Here to serve, that should be something we all want to do. We want to serve God. Don't look at it as, as a job, but look at it as serving the Lord. Ask yourself, how can I serve God now? Even though I'm younger, how can I serve Him? A young person can serve, uh, serve God if they choose to. Make a list of ways that you can serve God and start praying in your heart and asking God to give you jobs that you can do to serve Him. And you know what? It could be that your job is to pray for the pastor, to pray for our singing, to pray for our leadership. God wants you to serve Him in many different ways. I love you guys. Now you know what our shirts mean, that we're here to serve, we're here to help. If you need help, let us know. We're always here. I love you and can't wait to see you all.